All right. Well, welcome everybody to another Bay Trail Confidential, or actually, I should be calling it something else now. It's Bay Area Trails Confidential. We'll talk a little more about that. Um, do want to thank everyone who has participated in the poll and encourage the rest of you to um, chime in and tell us about yourselves. I'll share it in, I don't know, about 30 seconds. I'm Rodney Paul. This is our December show, and it is our second anniversary. We've been doing this for two whole years now. So we're going to do a little bit of celebrating and talking about that. But um, let's, let's start with this poll. So I'll give you, I don't know, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to end the poll, share the results. So we've got people from all around the Bay Area, which is kind of one of our goals. We want to be kind of a regional show, but we also have some other folks elsewhere in Northern California. So if you want to tell us in chat where you are, that would be, I would love to know about that. Um, lots of people who enjoy hiking and walking. Only one person saying they, they their preferred activity is biking. I, I would be another person, but I don't get to vote in this, um, a birder out there. And then I asked about some places that we're going to be talking about on the show today. So I talked about um, we're going to be talking about Colma and um, South San Francisco and Sign Hill Park is there, the Tanforan Memorial. Um, we're going to definitely talk about that really interesting new thing in San Bruno. Um, in the uh, Bass Cultural Center, very cool. Richmond Greenway, nice to see a whole bunch of people have been there. I have some pretty exciting stuff to talk about involving that. And we also have exciting news about West Grant Avenue. So, I'm going to stop sharing that. Give me a second to clear my screen so I can see everything okay. But um, we are hosted by City Guides, who has been, they've been our host for the last two years. City Guides is a nonprofit that does walking tours in San Francisco. I've been involved with them for the past seven years. It's a great organization. Uh, do you want to just acknowledge that we are on unceded, unlonely land? This is a map of the Bay Area showing the different uh, Native American groups in the areas where we were. And, you know, this the people um, lived for many, many generations here before uh, the uh, people from outside came in and changed everything. And many people from Native American tribes live in the Bay Area today. So we just want to acknowledge them and their ancestors in the land that we're on. This is the uh, agenda for tonight. We're going to be talking about the Bay Area Trails Collaborative, which brings together lots of people around the Bay Area, takes a regional view of the trail networks. We're going to be talking to Guy Joaquin, who does um, Bartable Walks, and um, we're going to be celebrating our second anniversary. So I want to welcome my guest, Laura Cohen from Bay Area Trails Collaborative. How are you doing tonight, Laura? Are you able to unmute? Oh, there we go. Unmuted. Uh, I'm doing great. Good to be here, Rodney. Thank you. You're really happy to have you. We're going to learn a lot more about the Bay Area Trails Collaborative. And then Guy Joaquin, currently with Walk San Francisco. How are you tonight, Guy? Very, very good. Really happy to be here. Thanks for the chat, for the chance to gather with other uh, other folks and talk trails. Yep, we're going to, you know, we, these are our two topics. Um, we always talk about Bay Trail cred at the top of the show. Guy, I didn't I didn't actually do a map for you, but I know you've been pretty much all around the Bay, the Bay Trail in particular. Tell, tell me about like the places you've been in the Bay Area on foot or by bike. On, yeah, well, um, probably at the, you know, the start of in January of 2020, I started systematically kind of walking the Bay Trail in segments and we were kind of knee deep still in the pandemic and all of that. So that was what I would do when I wasn't, you know, on a free weekend if there wasn't something else going on. So um, I had walked parts of the Bay Trail many, many times over the years, but I, at this time when I was really kind of going at it in stages, I had started in Point Isabel and headed south um, and really did a good job, good chunk of it during that first six months. And just because of uh, you know, life and everything. I, I um, haven't got into it so much, so uh, so much lately. But I've made it all the way south and around the bay. And I last about three weeks ago, I did a stage from McNear Beach 
all the way up to the Marin County Civic Center. So that's where I've left off. So by my Google map calculations, it's about 360 miles in, although I've been always doing it as a loop, walking back to where I started and I've been collecting those miles as well. So I've been, um, so I'm a bit over it all, maybe 500 or so miles um, if you calculate them all. Cool. Well, yeah. we're going we're gonna to be talking uh, in the January show, we're going to talk a lot more about circumnavigation, which I'm really excited about. Here's Lee's Bay Trail cred. Lee, have you added anything, added anything to this in the past month? No, unfortunately, I haven't added anything new, but I've been uh, going back to a lot of oldies but goodies, I'd like to say. Yeah, we should maybe like make thicker lines where we've been multiple times. I've started showing people where I've been in the past months. So this is kind of where I, I went, particularly in this area, to prepare for the show. We're going to talk more about that in topic number two. And then this is my, my Bay Trail cred for the past month, um, which is good, except it's kind of weird. I, I can't believe I haven't been over the Golden Gate Bridge. But I guess I, I either I didn't or I forgot to turn on Strava when I did. Interesting. Um, a couple before we jump into stuff, a couple trail updates. Um, many of you heard that Paul Madonna, whose uh, drawings we used on the last show, um, he was in a, a car accident and um, pretty pretty um, badly injured, but he's doing much better. I got a nice email from him, and there was um, uh, a, a uh, fundraising campaign for him. It's done pretty well. So the one thing I'd suggest to people is. You know, I think his his drawings are just amazing of San Francisco. And if you're thinking of like, what's a good gift to get somebody who loves the Bay Area? Think about Paul Madonna, Madonna's um, Everyday Coffee and other books. I'm sorry, All Over Coffee and other books, including the brand new one he did with Gary Camilla um, that we talked about on last month's show. Um, it's a great way to show support for him. Also wanted to um, just, um, if those of you who didn't see this in the paper, the slow streets in San Francisco are, are being made permanent. These ones are, and uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm really happy about um, you know this becoming a much more formal thing. I think, in my opinion, it's been a, a big improvement for the city. Um, just makes it, I feel so much safer walking around some of these areas. And then I'll, I'll just uh, tap toot my own horn. Um, the Oracle Park ballpark tours, that I, I was leading up until the start of the pandemic are resuming this month. And my very first one is gonna be on Friday, December the 23rd. I'm gonna be leading tours at 10.30 and 12.30. They do cost money, um, $25 for adults. It's, there's some discounts for kids and seniors, um, but it's a, it's a 90 minute tour. And um, it's, it's a really great experience as long as you're not a Dodger fan. <laughs> and uh, this is something I'm going to be showing, talking about on the tour. This is um, the location where Oracle Park is. And this is kind of like, you know, you, you talk about like this, this ballpark being built in areas that were once water, the waters of Mission Bay. And this kind of gives you a sense of that. This is a, a map of 1899 showing a couple of wharves that were built. But basically all of this was water where the ballpark was. So let's talk about the Bay Area Trails Collaborative. Um, Laura Cohen, how are you doing? Um, let's let's start talking about your great organization. Yeah, great. Good evening, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm Laura Cohen. I'm a Western Region Director of Rails to Trails Conservancy. Uh, and Rails to Trails started the Bay Area Trails Collaborative, I want to say about seven years ago. And we wanted to create a regional voice for trails. You know, there's a lot of people working on trails in various capacities in the Bay Area. We have a lot of, you know, talented, energetic people who have devoted a lot of time to making these facilities available for everybody. Uh, but there wasn't really a regional group where everybody could kind of come together, share their expertise, work across uh, jurisdictions to support each other's trails and kind of map out a, a regional vision. So that's what um, that's what we did and we uh, we created this group um, and it's been growing ever since. Uh, the Bay Area Trails Collaborative now has about um, 50 plus uh, uh, members, their public agencies, um, bicycle coalitions, nonprofit trail groups, a lot of park and open space districts, uh, consulting firms that work in the field. And uh, we are um, 
you know, laid out a, uh, a vision for a, a regional connected network. And you see that uh, the, the map on, on, on your screen now, that was uh, the result of, of uh, you know, some years of, of work because that all represents some GIS data that was lovingly and time consumingly amassed from many, many different sources. And uh, in creating the network, we, uh, you know, we just talked to a lot of people about what were the priorities and how could we put together this spine of a, of a connected let me, network. Let me just ask you, so we're looking at this map with all these trails, but this is bringing together a lot of different, like we've got the Bay Trail, the Ridge Trail, um, there's a coastal trail. What are, like, what are all the trail um, networks that are being brought together in this map? Yeah, th those are the biggest ones. We we it, this is a um, 2,600 mile vision right here that you see on the map. Um, it's about 60 percent complete, and so we did incorporate. You know, we had worked for many years uh, with the Bay Trail and the Ridge Trail and and uh, Coastal Trail folks, and we wanted to include those kind of established networks in in our network, uh, and then build on that to connect a lot of the disparate pieces. And so uh, those, the, the coastal trail that's in the Bay Area, the Ridge Trail and the Bay Trail are all a part of this network. Plus, uh, you know, an, another um, say thousand miles of other trails that we uh, uh, put together by talking to planners in every county in the Bay Area and a lot of the agencies and advocates, what are the priorities and how can we kind of sketch out like a, a spine of this network? Um, we didn't intend to map every trail, uh, but we wanted to kind of create the, you know, the, the main vision for an, an interconnected network. And, uh, you know, we want everybody to be able to get from their home to uh, school, to jobs, to shopping, to recreation, parks, open space, and to other trails to make these longer journeys and not have to get in your car to do that. So that's really your vision is like um, a, a region where we can really, we have a lot of really safe options for getting around. And the idea, like so many people feel like, oh, I'd like to to, to do more um, either on foot or on my bike, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. When, when these orange lines become green, when they go from proposed to existing, it's going to be um, much, much safer to get around. Yeah, and it, it'll serve more people and it'll be a lot more equitable. Um, you know, that was uh, one of the important criteria for us in developing this network and making sure that we were connecting, you know, all, all communities and with, with a, you know, special attention to uh, lower income communities, communities of color, which uh, have been, you know, underrepresented in these um, kinds of amenities for a long time and tend to have a lot of ex higher. Um, uh, uh, public health challenges, a higher um, uh, number of um, uh, kind of barriers to uh, accessibility and, you know, freeways uh, that were put right through communities, things like that. So we wanted to uh, make sure we were really paying attention to that and uh, making those connections. Yeah, you, you um, shared with me this buffer analysis. Um, maybe we should step through this and just talk about um, how you were looking at you know, what could be done to improve equity and make these trails serve a lot more people. Right. Yeah. So so um, just a quick, quick word on, on buffer analysis. So this is basically one of the things that GIS allows you to do is kind of take a look at what you've mapped and then analyze. We basically looked at a buffer of um, looking at the proposed trail network with the existing and the ultimate 2,600 mile vision and looked at a half a mile buffer all around it and then a two mile buffer and looked at a number of things that we thought were important to, to connect, uh, such as um, schools, jobs, transit, and uh, what MTC is now calling equity priority communities. So that's kind of a term of art that they developed and you, they used to use the term communities of concern, but basically it's a measure of census tracts with a significant concentration of underserved populations. And they use a number of factors to kind of calculate that. It's um, you know people of color, income, limited English, um, low vehicle ownership, 
uh, proportion of people with disabilities or seniors, things like that. So all those are bundled in. I have a question. You mentioned GIS. Yeah. What, what is GIS? Uh, geographic information system. So basically it's just when you develop a map like this, each of those lines um, is based on an actual place in a map with longitude and latitude. So what generates that map is this huge uh, database of, of points on a map so that you can more easily kind of manipulate it. And then you can do all this analysis of uh, like the buffer analysis, like what's within half a mile of this network, schools and and uh, and these other things. So it's a great um, mapping analysis tool. So okay, you, you use that to create these tables. That's right, and and we uh, you know we discovered a lot of um, important things. We and you know anticipated that this would really provide a lot more connectivity if we complete this twenty six hundred mile vision. And uh, sure enough, the, the equity implications are very significant. So right now, the existing trail network um, for people within these equity priority communities, uh, there's 1.2 million within a half a mile buffer now of what's completed. But if we complete the network, it jumps to 1.9 million. That's a really significant increase. And so that means there's a lot more people will have an easily accessible trail to their neighborhood. And that's what we wanna see. Um, and, um, uh, and you can also see with a two mile, um, with a two mile buffer, you know, you go from 6 million to 6.9 million. That's a pretty significant portion of the entire Bay Area. So we yeah. were really happy to be able to kind of quantify these benefits. Yeah, it, help, it helps us make the case to, to build these things. Um, let's look at some other ones. You you were talking about schools, and um, like a lot of these these uh, trails can serve like like now we could have kids going to school on these trails instead of being driven on buses or in cars. Right. Yeah. And and within a half a mile, you see there there's a lot of schools. It goes from 507 to 730 uh, schools, and that's serving. 441,000 students at those at those schools when this network is complete. So, you know, Safe Routes to School becomes an actual reality, like you can actually do it because the trails are there. That's great. And then for, for jobs, we, we see also a pretty big increase. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially, I mean, the, the uh, both the half a mile and two mile buffer, but, uh, you know, especially that, you know, the two mile buffer for, um, trails getting you to a job site, uh, you know, and increasingly, you know, you, these are also um, connections to transit to get to jobs and uh, with electric bikes that kind of uh, expand your your range and expand the, uh, you know, the, the folks that can do these um, commutes comfortably, uh, you know, a two mile buffer is a very bikeable distance. And we've got some juicy stuff coming up about the some of the priority projects that kind of result from this buffer analysis. Um, what about, so we, we see also like a big increase of access to transit hubs. Uh, I'm a really big fan. Of course, Guy, Joaquin, we're going to be talking about Bartable um, experiences. I love the idea of combining biking and transit. So this kind of talks to that, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. We we really want uh, you know trails and transit to work together. Um, you know all active transportation uh, needs to connect to transit because ideally you don't want people driving to a, a, a transit hub or a BART station. You want to be able to make that full trip uh, without getting in a car. That's where we get the most environmental benefits. You also get the most health benefits from people just working in that exercise into their daily life. So yep, yeah, that's what we want to see. Yeah. That's what I do. Um, so, so these are the priority projects, um, and we're going to jump. We're going to kind of dive into a, um, a couple of them, um, but but the, you know, this is like thirteen really um, exciting projects that you guys are are hoping will be coming to fruition in the not too distant future, right? Yeah, yeah. We basically, as a group, we um, we nominated and voted on these, and these were the ones that we thought were really regionally significant, and uh, that would each of them make a really big difference to the communities that they're serving and to the region as a whole. So, uh, yeah, we've got some really important big projects in here, 
um, you know, including ones that, that uh, we can kind of talk a little more about um, that yeah. are really active right now. Yeah, let's jump into those two. And these are two that that do have that equity component to them. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be serving these communities, but I, I think they're going to be useful for a lot of people. So one of them is this West Oakland connector um, that gets people to the Bay Bridge. Um, currently, like, you know, it's you, you you have to go all the way around here to get there. And this part of it isn't particularly safe. Um, yeah. And, and we've actually talked about this. Um, this is this is kind of the current situation. You can actually ride a bike on West Grand Avenue. I've done it. I, I did not have a good time. I, I did it once. I won't do it again. Um, you can also walk it. It's it's really, um, you know, if, if this looks scary, it trust me, it really is. Yeah. And then here's kind of the vision for the um what what they're going to do in the future, right? You so you want to right. tell us more about this, Laura? Yeah. So this is the West Oakland link of the Bay Bridge Skyway, and so yeah, the proposal is is a separate elevated um, uh, class one, uh, meaning a separated path, uh, and in, and then uh, an additional one point five miles of connecting on street bike lanes that get you there. So this helps connect to the existing bike path that's on the east span of the Bay Bridge. And of course, the ultimate vision is then to get past Treasure Island across the west span of the bridge all the way to San Francisco. So Which is it's another you know, priority project. Yeah, they, yeah. that's a, it's a it's a massive, um, you know, uh, long term vision. But, you know, the east um, span of the bridge already has that path, but getting there is pretty hairy. So that's what the West Oakland Link is all about. And here's the great news. Just today, the California Transport Transportation Commission voted uh, to um, award the Active Transportation Program grants. They allocated almost $1 billion statewide today. And one of those recipients was this project, the West Oakland Link, got $17.5 million. So great news for that. It's moving ahead, and it's a really important um, connection for the East Bay and the West Oakland community in particular to get to the Bay Bridge. That That is huge news, Laura. I'm so excited to hear that. Um, we, in the pa in past um, shows, we talked about this, and um, I'll definitely be using this. Uh, it links to, you know, as you said, it links to the Bay Bridge, um, the Alex Zuckerman um, bike path, it's called. I actually knew Alex Zuckerman. He was a tireless bicycle advocate uh, in the Berkeley area. So so pretty exciting stuff. And, and just making sure that a broader range of people can get access to these trails. Um, so let's talk about an, another equity kind of related project, the Richmond Greenway Connector. And uh, this is something I, I, you told me about this. I didn't know about it. Um, there, this is actually Bridge Week, and it was in my email last Friday about the events. I went to one of them yesterday. So currently, there's um, a really nice greenway on the east side of Richmond, and then there's one that kind of goes through the, the. When you get to the other side of this gap, it's very nice here. This is a this was an old railway. So I guess right. it is kind of classic rails to trails. Yep. And um, but this part of it is not fun. In fact, I biked it yesterday uh, going to an event at Rich City Rides and, you know, a bunch of cars came real close to me and I didn't like that. Um, this is the vision that that they have for this bridge. And you, Laura, you told me, I didn't realize this, that um, this bridge is, is kind of an artwork. It's evoking um, an osprey, which is the official bird of the city of Richmond. That's right. So it's really yeah, beautiful. Right. Yeah. So this is this is a um, a rendering of uh, the bridge design that that. Uh, so right now, a uh, the city of Richmond um, brought together a team of consultants, of which I'm a part, uh, to look at how do we get across this gap and to provide um, some specific design proposals for a bridge across. Uh, you know, you're going across railroad tracks and BART and and uh, uh, arterial, and it, it's you know a pretty um, major gap in it. And right now, as you mentioned, 
in order from get to get from one part of the greenway to another, you have to do this circuitous half mile out of your way across um, uh, all kinds of streets and, and it's yeah not fun or direct and uh, it just doesn't work very well. So this is um, vision uh, and we're pretty excited that we have a really high profile bridge designer on the team, Donald McDonald, who actually designed the current west span of the Bay Bridge, that white tower that we have now that's really beautiful. So he's on the team and you know the city of Richmond, it was really important to them that this not just be uh, you know, some ugly functional low cost bridge. They wanted something that was beautiful, that was iconic, that would be kind of a destination and a draw for people to come to Richmond and see this, you know, um, this transportation facility that's also really public art and uh, to be, a, um, you know, just a, a, an uplifting experience to even go across that bridge as, as a bicyclist or pedestrian. So, uh, you know, pretty, um, amazing design inspired by the wings of the osprey, which is the, the, the bird of the city of Oakland. So, I mean, the city of Richmond, sorry. Uh, and so this, um, this week, um, the, the, our team of consultants has designated this bridge week. We're doing a lot of public outreach, different kinds of meetings and, and open houses, um, inviting folks to come and take a look at these designs, talk to the team, ask questions, give feedback. So we're looking at, um, a bridge, but also there's some other components of on-street improvements surrounding that area to really make it comfortable and accessible and um, work much better for bikes and pedestrians. So, uh, you know, we're already on Wednesday night, so a few of these things have already happened, but tomorrow evening at Nevin Community Center, if you want to come on out between five and seven, the team will be there to answer questions. Uh, they'll also be at the pop-up farmers market and at Unity Park on Friday and Saturday. So, um, you know, anybody yeah, I, is welcome to come on out. I went to the one last night at Rich City Rides, and I was really glad I did. Um, you know, just like great to see the vision. Um, great to see the, a group of people that are going to be involved in advocacy for it. I told them I want to be part of that, and I would actually like this show to help. Um, maybe bring people into all that. Like we can be involved in this. This isn't just some passive uh, situation where we're going to sit back and wait for funding. We got to go make this happen. Um, but, um, you know, it's just like this is a real game changer. It means that children are going to be able to bike all over Richmond. It takes people from Richmond to the, the Ohlone Greenway, which would take them into Berkeley. And I think it also brings people from, say, Berkeley and El Cerrito into Richmond, which happens to have a lot of really great ethnic restaurants. So um, there's a lot of cool things happening in Richmond, and I'd like to be able to get there safely on my bike. So that it was really great. I went to that. I saw that they had this picture at it. This is this is the historic site. This is actually where the bridge would go. There had been a rail um, bridge there at one time, apparently, that got dismantled. And you can just see how completely crisscrossed Richmond was by railroads. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Kind of what a great photo. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And, um, you know, this is just a pretty exciting vision. So um, the other thing I learned about um, just in kind of looking into this is some other things happening in Richmond. This is a, called the Yellow Brick Road, um, which connects to the, um, the, gre the greenway that goes through Richmond. And it's really designed for like making it making it a very inviting place for children in particular and other community members to walk um, to the Greenway. And I think they're going to be using like yellow bricks to make it attractive. Um, that's right. I, but I, yeah. I kind of felt like I would I would definitely want to check that out, too. So that's there's some really cool stuff happening in Richmond. I want to be involved in that. Um, also, you know, Rich City Rides, we, we've had um, Najari Smith from Rich City on the show before. This is like their Bay, Bay um, circumnavigation that they did a couple of years ago. So unrelated to all this, but I kind of, in in learning about this, found out that they're gonna, they do these things and maybe I'll have a chance to do that with them one of these days. Yeah, Rich City Rides a great organization. Najari Smith heads it up. He's just a, an amazing, generous, um, big hearted guy who does so much for his community and, um, and uh, yeah, they, they have um, self-care rides and celebration rides, and uh, they do a lot of great stuff. So it's worth uh, checking out. 
So we, we can get involved with them, but we can also get involved with uh, the Bay Area Trails Collaborative. So, so tell us, like you, you've got kind of, tell us about your, your structure and how people like me could be involved with your organization. Yeah, we, we want to be able to involve both the uh, kind of the professionals, you know, the people that work at the agencies and who are full-time advocates, but we also want to make room for, uh, you know, just the, the general public or the casual supporter to say, hey, I believe in what you're doing and I support it because that's so important. These projects get done because people show up, speak up, use the trails and say, we want more of this, or we don't have this in our neighborhood, we need it, or we have some safety issues you really need to address, you need to separate the, the bicyclists and pedestrians from traffic. So um, we have uh, what we call our members, and those are really the very active um, organizations and agencies who kind of roll up their sleeves and attend our meetings and share our working groups and kind of get the... Um, uh, They're the ones to know what GIS is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we work on, uh, you know, on and advocacy and policy and advocating for more funding as well as technical assistance to kind of move these projects forward. But then um, if you're a more kind of casual supporter, and you just want to say, hey, I love your vision and I support it, you know, count me as a supporter. You can become a friend of VATSI. And if you just look at that, um, go to that URL down there at the bottom, and all it really asks you to do is to say, uh, you know, read the vision and mission statement of the Bay Area Trails Collaborative and say, I support this and provide your name and email. And um, by doing that, you will also get, you know, periodic updates on what we're doing. And, uh, you know, if there are things where it's important to show up and um, show support for trails, we'll let you know about that sparingly. Um, <laughs> and uh, we plan to have an annual gathering starting um, next year. Uh, and it's free free to join. So I encourage you to just um, check that out. And uh, just we want to grow that support to thousands of people who say, yes, we want a, that network to be completed and, and everybody to be able to enjoy it. Well, I, I definitely consider myself a friend of Batsy. And um, I'm particularly excited about this receive updates because I want to kind of um, pass those on to this group and also maybe spotlight some of the things you guys, you know, some of these um, priority projects in the future. Yeah. Um, also wanted to say, um, well, here's our, our takeaways, but also mention the Rails to Trails Conservancy, your organization, you can join Rails to Trails. Um, I've, I've taken advantage of some of the great trails you guys have built over the years, including Back in 1992, when I biked across the country, I went through some of those trails and I particularly remember some in Wisconsin that were really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I certainly encourage, um, you know, anybody who's not already to become a member of Rails to Trails. We're a national nonprofit and we are, you know, a voice of trails that helps get the, uh, the funding and the policies that make it possible. And we work with a lot of communities to get their trail visions done. So, uh, you know, by joining you get our wonderful magazine and access to a lot of resources that can help you kind of plan out your own trail journeys. So, uh, yeah, we always appreciate the support. So I, I'm I'm joining Rails to Trails. I would encourage others to do that. Um, these are kind of my takeaways from the Bay Area Trails Collaborative. You know, you guys are creating a regional trail network, which is cool because this show, we take a regional view also. So I think we're really aligned in that sense. Um, I love the fact that you're prioritizing connectivity to these key places and um in, in that you have equity in mind. I think equity is good for everybody. You know, we want to see a broader range of people using our trails. Um, you're championing the completion of these Bay Area trail networks. We've talked a lot about the Ridge Trail and the Bay Trail, their vision, and they're pretty far along, but we, we need help closing the final gaps to, to make those visions reality. Um, and then that we all can become friends of, of Batsy and, and be involved. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we do this because the, you know, trails bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. And we, you know, love connecting with the people that, that love them, support them and want to see more. And by working together across the region and having this just, you know, upwelling of support for trails and, uh, why they, you know, make our lives uh, uh, just so much better. 
um, is is key to the success of this whole effort. So uh, yeah, we welcome uh, anybody who uh, wants to kind of join in at uh, whatever level they want to join. Great. Well, thanks, Laura, for telling us about all that. Um, I think if, are you going to be able to stick around at the end of the show for any any questions people have. Sure. Great. We appreciate that. And also, um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about, you know, we'll talk a little bit when we talk about our anniversary about what the future for this show might look like. But now I want to turn to our second topic. Um, Guy Joaquin is joining me, and he is the Bartable Walker, who um, he, he's got these really great web pages that uh you know are get, got some exciting um adventures for anyone who wants to take them on so how are you, so guy tell us about about this um how did you come up with this idea to um you know what, what was what got you involved with this effort sure sure so the origin story huh <laughs> um well i i it, it basically started about 10 years ago i kind of kind of say that as when i started my quote-unquote walking career and it started with walking the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage trail in northern Spain. And over there, there are many official routes that people take on this, you know, trek across um, Europe, you know, to the city of Compostela, Santiago de Compostela, in northeast, um, northwest, rather, Spain. And um, there are many routes, but still the most popular one is from Spain, the uh, Spanish-French border in the Pyrenees. Um, it's called the, the Camino Frances. So it's about 500 miles in five weeks. So it's about, you know, 12 to 20 miles, you know, every day. And after that experience, when I returned home, you know, the itch for longer distant walks didn't go away. It was kind of in the, in my, worked its way in my DNA by that point. So, you know, I was trying to figure out how I can keep that going. But the problem was, you know, when I did a long walk, you know, how could I get back? you know, to my starting point. And in just thinking about what was available in the Bay Area, BART was one of the answers, was the answer at the time. And so with some friends, you know, we had mapped out a route from Richmond all the way down to downtown Berkeley, you know, really crossing some of the trails that Laura was talking about today and along the Bay Trail. Um, and it was from that experience that kind of that, that idea of, hey, Bartable walks, can we make this a Bartable walk? And I think nowadays in the Bay Area, we use that term, it's almost just part of the local jargon, you know, is that restaurant, is that Bartable, can we get there, you know, it, you know, using it in that context. So, you know, I kept kind of putting those together because there were wonderful ways to explore the Bay Area, you know, using public transit and really get out to areas uh, that I'd never been before and hit those streets, learn about them. And they just led me to want to learn more. So after all of those um, kind of adventures, it just led me into doing some more research and finding about, you know, finding more about these places, these interesting places I encountered. Um, and then a few more years it took, uh, and I had a couple of walks that I did with friends and with different hiking groups I'm a part of. And I had just at a whim, not so much a whim, but a blind email had contacted Bard and say, hey, I know you have, they have a, this Bardable component of their website. And we've been working ever since for the last five years. And each year I do, a, you know, without, you know, with the exception of the heavy pandemic days, um, I would do a couple of write up a couple of articles and Bard has been very, very supportive of them and post them on their Bardable website. So they're, they're available online for everyone to use and, uh, you know, uh, get out there and explore different areas. Yeah. And, you know, I really love point to point travel, you know, point to point adventures. And um, so this was like, you, you know, looking at these things was really inspirational. So this is the one you and I talked about um, me trying to do. And it's it's um going from Coma to San Bruno, or is it which where's it doesn't matter where you start, right? Yeah, yeah. The way I wrote it up was from starting from Coma and heading south, but yeah, definitely make it, you know, it's definitely customizable. It's not meant to be set in stone and what works for people to break them up or to add on to it that I know Rodney you have was wonderful to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I felt like, well, I had to, had to admit to Guy, I didn't really do it the way you said to do it. I did it on my bike. I didn't do it on foot. I know you did it on foot. Um, but it was it was so much fun exploring Colma 
in South San Francisco. I think they both have a lot to offer. So this is actually what I did. And I did it in reverse. I started in uh, San Bruno and ended up in Colma and even made a detour in the, in the Daily City. Um, and you know, Colma is a place, not a lot of people live in Colma, but there are a lot of people in Colma yeah. nevertheless, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think they have a tagline or, you know, there's things around coma that there is a, for every person that's above ground, you know, there are two people that might be below, you know, <laughs> residents that are below ground. Like, there's some, you know, you know, snazzy phrase like that. But there's also, there's some really cool ones there. So the, like, it's really fun to visit some of these, um, these graves uh, you know, there's Emperor Norton, you know, the, the man who commanded that we build the Bay Bridge, the Emperor Norton Bridge, some of us call it. Um, the, tell me who this, who is this guy? This is the mausoleum of the Hearst family. So, and... yeah, this is like the Hearst Castle um, mausoleum, kind of. Right. So, um, it just interesting, it was, ma it was really commissioned by Phoebe. Hearst, wife of, you know, William Randolph, and uh, senior, and um, it was modeled after the Temple of Athena in, in Athens, and it is, a, I think, a little tidbit about this is, and I was lost as well, there's no sign, like, in front of the door that says Hearst or anything. Of course, it's probably the most grandest thing that you see in that cemetery there, um, and, uh, but yeah, for some reason, it was don't know whether it was meant to not draw attention to it, though it seems kind of difficult <laughs> because it is a grand structure in this in the cemetery there. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Here's here's one. It's um, as a ballpark guide is kind of near and dear to my heart. The the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. Right. Joe DiMaggio and the Holy Cross Cemetery. So yeah, the the local boy, you know, made good and uh, yeah buried there and then um this is um, i think this is just like there's also just more um less notable people but nevertheless we're it's interesting to look at like you know who who they were when they lived um this one was i'm trying to remember who's this is this was this is going inside this is the one that you took guy this is the one i came across oh this is uh um klaus spreckles who is the guy who um, who shot Michael De Young, and he also was the was um, he his father? No, I think it was him who um, funded the uh, Legion of Honor Museum. So the guy who created the Legion of Honor Museum actually shot the guy who created the De Young Museum, and yet today those two museums are are together. Kind of kind of interesting. And I think the young, Charles Young, if, if the same one that newspaper publisher, right, is also, I think, in that cemetery as well. I think you're right about that. Yeah. I, think, I think they're actually near each other, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, and also nearby is Lefty O'Doul, who, you know, us, you know, the Bay Trail people will love him because the, um, the bridge over Third Street is the Lefty O'Doul Bridge. And I've, I've gone, gone to this grave before, and sometimes you, you'll go there and they'll be like, two cans of Guinness, one of which is empty and the other which is, of which is full. People will go and drink a can of Guinness with Lefty and leave one for him. Um, I ran across this, Steve Silver from Beach, Beach Blanket Babylon. So lots of cool stuff in Colma, Guy, but you, you didn't stop there. Um, you had a lot more for us to look at. Oh, well, so tell us about this place. This is very close to all these cemeteries, right? Yeah, in between, um, you know, Cypress Lawn and Holy Cross, so where we saw, um, you know, the mausoleum of the Hearst family and then the um, gravesite of DiMaggio, uh, yeah, is Malloy's Tavern. So this is a fun place to stop in, you know, in between. And like a lot of things around the Bay Area in San Francisco, kind of goes back to those prohibition days. It was started by um, an Irish immigrant, Frank Malloy, and you know, for whom the bar is named, and it, I believe it's still in the family. And it was, you know, he had the enterprising entrepreneurial idea of setting up a place for people, families at the who, you know, attend funerals or services at the cemeteries to be able to kind of have their 
you know, raise their last glass in, in honor of their loved ones. So um, set up this. And I think there's also some bootlegging involved. I think just since it was prohibition days. Um, but it is a fun place. It's a fun place to go to. It's definitely um, locals who are in the area. I think some of those seats are just reserved permanently for people who are who who, uh, who come by on a frequent basis. And um, ju it's just your kind of your classic Irish establishment. You know, Irish music. There's a countdown to uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's kind of the, the wood. Um, Victorian style lamps or, you know, era lamps. Uh, so it's a pretty neat place. My one tip there that I found out when I was walking with some friends there is if you're going to order a drink, make sure you know what it is before you approach the bar. <laughs> uh, no diddle, diddle daddling at the bar, you know, be very, uh, come up, get your order and, and, and enjoy it. And, and you know, what you really ought to get is a, this is a, this is a shot of Jameson's. That's probably what you ought to get there. Get the Irish whiskey. The Guinness is good there too. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Get yeah, the Guinness. Yeah. Um, so then we keep going to a place called Sign Hill Park, which actually I think we all kind of know about this, the um, South San Francisco sign. I, so, guy, you like inspired me. I, I'd seen this like you know how many times coming and going from the airport, but you inspired me to to go and to visit it. You know, and. Um, you actually have to, it's a little bit of an effort to get up there, depending on what direction you're coming from. And uh, you and I were talking about, um, there's there's some interesting activities that happen in this park. So so what is it that people do with this sign? Well, yeah, um, I think there is a tradition of sliding down the letters, although I'm not sure what are the best letters to go by. So if anyone is kind of a South San Francisco, grew up there, um, did that, no, which is... <laughs> My vote is for something that's long and straight, like a T or an I, um, but that is, you know, a, a tradition that, or a pastime that locals there do, sliding down those letters. And yeah, how many of us, you know, how many times can we count of coming from the airport or from the South Bay and you see this emblazoned on the hillside there and, and to actually go get up close and personal with it, it it's, you know, it's quite a treat. Yeah, and then I found this sign, this woman, Edna Harks, um, got it put on the National Historic Registry of Places. And uh, so so there's like a bunch of signs for her. And it's just kind of cool that she was, I think there was some, there were some people who were saying, Let, let's get rid of this thing because it says the industrial city, even though South San Francisco really isn't industrial very much anymore. It's mostly residential and warehouses, but she, she really wanted to keep it. So there's my wife and I hiking up there. And yeah, this is the bike ride I did. Oh, and so then after after Sign Hill Park, what are we looking at here? Yeah, you can stop by kind of a great gem that's hidden amongst the, the industrial kind of warehouses in the area is the Basque Cultural Center. Uh, so for some real hearty, traditional Basque food place to go, um, you know, it's kind of the nice, you know, traditional old school dining, uh, great portions, great value. If you watch the the, the KQD program or um, public television program, Check Please Bay Area, it's been featured on there. Uh, so had a good time there and it was especially um, resonated with me as I found out that uh, South San Francisco is the city center of a, a French village, St. John Pierre de Port, which is one of the, the traditional starting points of the Camino de Santiago. It's when I had started my first Camino. So when I found that, it was, it was, it was a, a real delight to see that connection and kind of make that tie to something that I had done. And that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Yeah. So, so the next thing we're going to talk about is something more serious and um, something I'm, I was really glad exists now, but wasn't there for a long time. Many of us know that um, the Tanforan Mall in the San Bruno Bar Station was the location of um, where Japanese Americans were um, first gathered before they were sent to internment camps. And this memorial was opened very recently. The signs you're seeing here have the names of all the people who were arrested and went through those camp, went through the Tanforan to the camps. And we'll take a look. Um, this is so. Here's the Bart Station. It, and it's just like right next to the BART station. So, so if you wanted to just go to the memorial, you could just go to San Bruno BART and, and check it out. There's also um, 
um, some some really good interpretive signs in the BART station about what happened there. Um, this, stat, this sculpture is in the middle of it, and these children with these tags around their necks um, actually come from a photograph that was taken by Dorothea Lang of families that were being that had been arrested and were being sent to the internment camps. So, you know, we I don't know how much how many other really good memorials we have to this in the Bay Area. I know there's a memorial in San Jose for the Japanese internment, but you know, it's something that I think we're hopefully going to be talking about a lot more in our in our schools and our history. Um, this very, very sad chapter in American history is an actual photograph of people at this was once a racetrack and they were kept in the stables as they awaited um, being sent off. And this is a map that is there. Um, so pretty powerful stuff. This is a, an example of the interpretive signage inside the BART station. In, in February, I'm gonna have a guest who wrote a book, um, a, a novel set in San Francisco and his father was among the people arrested uh, and sent to an internment camp. And uh, it, it's something that he kind of deals with in his novel, although it covers a lot of other things. So we'll be talking more about this subject on future shows. So that, that's, you know, something I hope everyone gets a chance to check out. Um, you know, it's right by the BART station. Here's just something I ran across. Uh, I, you don't even know about this guy. I, I ran across this sign in Daly City when I was finishing up my bike ride doing this. Um, about a mystery blimp that appeared in Daly City during World War II. So, you know, there's just so much interesting history here to, to uncover in these places. We, we are running a little short on time. We had a couple of other of your Bartable walks that um, we wanted to call out. Um, maybe we can go through a little, a little more quickly, Guy? Yeah, I... Um... You know, I, I've written about, I think, uh, last count, 17 of them. I've been kind of steadily getting on my 18th one. Um, but here's one that's a really fun one that was done th earlier this year from El Cerrito BART station to downtown. Again, you can walk in any direction. Um, but it really is kind of an ode to the Bay, you know, really draws in the work that, you know, the uh, Save the Bay organization did. Uh, so you see you go through McLaughlin Park. Um, you get to see the urban art over at Albany Bulb, like um, the beseeching woman that you see here. And you start out at, or you walk through, you know, doggy heaven out at Point Isabel. You go by the Shochikubai Sake Brewery. Um, so that's a fun one to see as well. And you really get to really appreciate the Bay. Um, really great mural work all the way up to Freight and Salvage as you're making your way up to downtown Berkeley. Yeah, and then this one, um, this is one in San Francisco that I think is going on Ridge Trail trails, among other places. For sure, to, uh, yeah. Twin Peaks. Yeah, this is fun too. It's a great urban hike uh, through Grand Canyon, going up and over Twin Peaks, and then passing by those hidden gems in Tank Hill, Mount Olympus, which I believe are on the, the, the Ridge Trail or pass by it. We uh, talked about Mount, Mount Olympus on the last show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you go by, you know, uh, yeah, there's Mount Olympus. So some fun things along the way. You pass by um, uh, Buena Vista Park. Uh, this is that house up at Upper Terrace that's made from uh, uh, clinker brick, brick, bricks from the 1906 earthquake. So you can see how they're kind of gnarled there. I'd been by that house, but I didn't realize those were clinker bricks. That's really, really cool. And if you're up there during the holiday season, they really go all out for all the holiday decorations with elves on the roof and you know nutcrackers out front. So that's you know really nice holiday lights to look at. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, this is uh, Randall, the Randall, the Randall Museum. Museum. Yeah, been a great model landscape down below on the on the first floor. And here's just a few of the Bartable walks. I didn't realize there were 18 of them, guy. They're, yeah. they're all really inspirational. And you and I are like-minded. Um, you know, we, we, I love transit-enabled uh, adventuring. And you, you've kind of like, these, these web pages that Guy has put together are, are just really rich with information and photographs. Uh, and they'll inspire you to do really, really cool things. 
And the funny thing is like, Guy, we, you and I were talking about this. You were looking to get a job in the, the kind of realm of, um, you know, public trail infrastructure. And, and then you landed this job just um, a few months ago with Walk SF. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the funny thing is, I, you know, it's been three months. I actually had my three month kind of check in today. Um, so, yes, I've been with uh, really a great organization, a small but mighty nonprofit Walk SF, which, um, you know, it, it, it advocates for pedestrian safety in San Francisco. And, yeah, the, the vision is short and sweet, and that's to make San Francisco the most walkable city in the nation. And I thought when I read that, you know, how cool is that? That's uh, and the a little side note, the connection in was someone who had read that coma to uh, San Bruno walk on BART and had contacted me and uh, that person helped me, you know, um, get an entree into the organization. So a lot of these things just kind of spider what, you know, <laughs> connect together. Because yeah, you, you're not just about walking, you're also about like making it interesting and fun. And, and you call out all these great experiences you can have. So um, my takeaways from talking to you, from learning about this, is this is a great way to experience new places in the Bay Area. Um, you know, the web pages have really detailed information. I think this is a great thing to direct out-of-town visitors to do. If you have someone visiting you and you, you know, you need to work and get them, get them to do something on their own, you should just turn them on to this. And they'll, they'll see stuff that most visitors of the Bay Area don't don't see. Um, I personally love transit-enabled adventures. And also, I, I noticed there was Barkable by bike. So yeah, yeah they cool. have several several articles on those as well. So I want to move on to our last topic. I, I think we might be going a little bit over, but I'll try not to go too far over. Um, just wanted to mention we are turning to, we have changed our name. We were Bay Trail Confidential but we really wanted to encompass more places. These are all the places that we have discussed over the past two years. We've done 24 shows now. And um, I was given this trophy, actually. I was uh, biking a couple of days ago and I, I found some trophy by the side of the road. I decided it was um, was obviously meant for Bay, Bay Area Trails Confidential. So um, that's kind of cool. But, you know, we don't want to really rest on our laurels. The question is, what do we do next? And I want to ask you, Guy, also Laura, also Lee, also Marie, you know, like I would love your organizations to be like kind of pitching stuff for me to do shows about the stuff that you guys are really excited about. And, um, you know, if I were to ask you guys, I don't know if anyone wants to jump in with something, but. Like what are what are some topics you'd like to see us cover in future shows? I'm gonna jump in. I know I can't see use my video today, but this is Marie from the Ridge Trail. And um, when Rodney said um, he was interested in this topic, immediately I thought, okay, we've got our fun guide to the to adventures on and off the trail. That's um, our newsletter for the month, and so um, it really highlights a whole bunch of different adventures around the bay. And we focused on where to go to see art, cultural um, and historical points of interest, um, where to get great food to eat, maybe music, so maybe some alternative adventures before or after your um, trail outing. So I'm gonna say fun on, um, on and off the trail. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point, Marie, because it really speaks to what Guy just told us is you know, we have these trails out there and the question is how do we really make the most of them? And, uh, you know, like to, to create something like Guy has that gives you a guide to doing something like this or something that you just spoke about that the Ridge Trail is doing, um, you know, I think that's, that's really the perfect thing for us to engage with these trails. Um, you know, these things, are, these things are there to be useful for active transportation, but they're also going to be a source of a lot of fun, right? And, um, I did want to talk about some highlights of, of the past year. Um, you know, we, we, we've covered a lot of really, really cool things. Um, so, you know, I, I have to say that like doing this show has given me experiences I would not normally have had. And I've learned about places that I, I didn't, didn't know before. So we did uh, some great shows about Bayview Hunters Point and Heron's Head Park. 
And I, I'm going to be doing more, I hope, about that. I love the Gary Camilla interview we did last month. Uh, and um, if you didn't experience that, you definitely should ch check out the video that we have of that. Um, American Canyon is a place I didn't know very much about at all. I, I just driven through it over the years. And to go there in the course of doing this show, um, I learned so much about a really cool place, especially if you love bird, bird life. It's excellent for that. Um, I've really enjoyed learning about the Ridge Trail. I met some great people who were involved with it. The Around the Bay in One Day Expedition, that was really fun. We used um, public transportation and bicycles to get all the way around the bay in one day. I also met I have some people who told me they did the whole thing with, without bicycles. They just did it on public transit. And I think they're going to be guests on a future show. Um, we had all kinds of circumnavigations going on that we talked about. And then the Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge in the South Bay, um, it was really great learning about that. There's some really great locations in there, including like Bear Island was, was a real highlight of the past year. This is like, I would call these my lessons learned. I don't know why I have this little thing here. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> um, so first of all, I have to say, I've met a lot of people through doing the show and I made some friends, some great friends over the past two years, who, who would know like during a pandemic that you, you would make new friends as a result of a project like this. But, um, you know, I, I feel really lucky to be connected to other people who are passionate about public space. Um, we've got a lot of new projects in the works and there's much more we can all do to be involved. We don't just have to sit back and, and watch it happen. We can really roll up our sleeves and, and help make it happen. Um, I feel like it's really valuable to take a regional view, and I'm always going to be a champion of active transportation and of prioritizing people over cars. Um, car, I drive a car, cars are necessary, but we need to make things much safer for people who are going around um, on foot or by bike. We always have a Serena selection, and she chose this place, Elsie Romer, Romer Park in Alameda, which is a bird sanctuary. And um, this is actually a photograph I took or a video I took of like some really amazing um, bird activity there. So that's really cool. We have a photo contest that we do um, every month and the winner gets either a Ridge Trail guide or a set of Bay Trail map cards. And I have five photographs I'm going to show you. And I'm going to put up our little poll and you guys are going to get the vote on the winner of this. So go ahead and um, this is photograph num photograph A. This is photograph B, C, D, and E. And this is all of them together. So go ahead and vote on these five photographs. And if you want, I'll see if I can go backwards. And there they are. This is E, D, C, B, and A. And I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds because we are going a little bit over time. I don't like doing that. I try to keep this thing to the hour that we told you it was going to be. All right, so give you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. These are the results. The winner is D. And it just so happens, <laughs> you, might you might recognize these photographs. Um, Guy, I think you're the winner of the photo contest this month. And you will have to choose um, whether you want the Bay Trail map cards or the uh, the Ridge Trail guide. Up to you. You have any thoughts on that, guy? Um, wow, pressure, pressure. Um, I would love a uh, Ridge Trail guide. Um, I have the map cards. I've been I use those to. I've been using those for the last two years. So yes, wonderful, wonderful. I didn't know. I didn't know I would come out with a wonderful uh, gift. Well. Thank you. I, I, Really happy to have you on the show. Our next show is going to be on January the 4th. And um, I think we're going to be talking a lot about circumnavigation. I got some other stuff I'm working on. And then here is our closing song, Happy Trails. Happy. 
trails everybody and you guys know that at the end of the show we let you um we're gonna let you unmute and ask questions i do want to say a couple thank yous that was jason myers also want to mention midnight kitchen did the um songs that we played for the uh slideshow and they have a gig this weekend at the kensington farmer's market that'll i'll have more information on that in my email that goes out friday um we have show notes at this web address dec22 at baytrailconfidential.com and um we would love to have folks um share your questions or experiences you can you're welcome to ask questions for laura or guy um joe i see you raise your hand go ahead joe yeah um this has been just great and pulling together people from organizations where they're trying to collaborate uh, around uh, building and publicizing and encouraging use of trails is great. Uh, just an idea for you and for them. Uh, since you have this whole network that you've built up over two years, what do you think about having a physical, now that COVID has receded somewhat, having a physical gathering of people who have done circumnavigations of one of, of either the Bay Trail or the, or the Ridge Trail, and get some of these some of the people from the the agencies that manage those trails or the advocacy groups like you i have tonight and uh, people could you know have socialized and change their experiences with their circumnavigations but also centralize some information about what what could be done to improve the trails how could they be publicized better what are the real what are some of the problems like the areas where the where there's something needs to be done in particular for in terms of facilities or signage or whatever, it seemed like it could be a good gathering and uh, you're in a perfect position to spark something like that with the contacts you have. Just an idea. I'd come. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Joe. I'm, you know, it's funny. Like we started this thing on zoom because it was the pandemic was going on. I liked zoom a lot because it was easier to bring together people from around the Bay area but I, I love doing in-person things. I, that's my, always my preference as a presenter. So um, I, I think that's a great uh, um, idea to have some in-person events. Um, the, the circumnavigation community is really special to me. So that I think that is an obvious thing. And then I, I love working with our, our, you know, these agencies, these organizations. I do want us to feel like we shouldn't just like tell them what we want them to do. We need to be involved in working with them, you know, um, like, they have limited resources. I'd like to see us involved in advocacy to get more resources. So um, like, for example, that bridge in Richmond, that's going to cost a lot of money. And I think people people are going to need to really stump for that and really raise their voices and, and try to find, you know, good um, sources of revenue to, to, to fund that. That's my opinion. Thanks, so, Joe. Uh, other thoughts? Other questions or comments? And I'll just add in there that we do have the Ridge Trail Trekkers. It's called the RT Trekkers Facebook group. And it is people who are mostly chatting about circumnavigating. And I do understand that not everybody uses Facebook, but it is a resource that's out there. Um, and they um, talk a lot about sharing tips and all sorts of things. Um, and we have talked about doing a, a gathering. And so kind of keep, keep you know take check back in with us and we'll see if that's something that's possible um in the next year or so yeah and then if there is something like that i i would love to be publicizing it so you know i've got that friday email that i send out in on the show so so maybe that's going to be it, it's it is really nice for me to be able to get together in person with you guys 
Um, I've had a bunch of people who, who've experienced this in my other programs come on my tours. That's really special to me. Uh, so, so I hope, hope uh, there's gonna be a lot more of that in the year ahead as things become more normal. Other thoughts out there? Anybody else wanna jump in with the question or comment? Um, I just want to just want to thank Laura. Uh, you know, it's great learning more about the Bay Area Trails Collaborative. I'm really glad we got connected. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, Guy, I just feel like you and I are very, very like minded in our approach to this. And I, I kind of feel like I wish I was putting together pages like you've done for your barnable walks for, for some of my like uh, biking adventures. So I don't know. I, I don't know where I'll find the time, but I'd like to do something like that. Um, Marie and Lee, always always appreciate having you guys on as a co co presenters and, and being part of this whole thing. So, if there's nothing else, um, I will um, wish everybody happy trails, a very happy holiday season, and we'll see you back in 2023 with another Bay Area Trails called. Uh, Bay Area Trails Confidential. Sorry, I'm still getting used to saying it. It's great to have you guys. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. It was a Thank pleasure. You. A lot of fun.